Here are the best free AI image upscaling tools that you can start using right now that require no registration and can be used on both Mac and PC. So to test all of these different software, I'm going to use the same AI image that I generated with Adobe Firefly to see how all of these different upscaling tools compare. Once we've gone through all of the different programs, I'll compare every result one by one, all against a $200 image upscaling software that I use in my photography to see which one actually works the best. So to begin in no particular order, the first image upscaling tool that we can use is I Love IM. So here on their homepage, we can just go to the upscale image option and then go and select our AI photo or photos that we want to upscale. I'll just select that one photo that I'll be using for this example, and we can either choose a two or four X resize. This particular tool is pretty bare bones. We don't get different models to choose from, but looking at the before and after, it adds some nice clarity to our subject. The details in her shirt look pretty nice. Some of that artifacting is gone. And once you're happy with it, we can click upscale and then download our photos on the final screen here, clicking download upscaled images. So that is our first option that we can consider. The next image upscaler is upscale.media. And here we can just upload our image once again, and we can choose our upscale amount up to eight times, but I'll just do four X so that it's the same as the other examples. And hovering over the subject here, we get a little bit of a preview. The final result is still a little bit artifacty, but it's quite a bit sharper than the original. Considering we also have an additional upscaling feature and a few more settings, this might be preferable over the previous option. So once you're happy with that, we can just click download image and that is it. The third AI image upscaler that we can consider is upscale, but this time not upscale.media, it's just upscale spelt with a Y. Now here on their homepage, if we go to download, we have this option, but if I went and clicked on the Mac OS, I found it took me to the app store for a paid program. But going to alternative downloads and then Mac OS, I can just go to DMG free download that, and then I get a software on my computer. I don't know if that applies the same way for Windows. I imagine it would, but if not, let me know in the comments below. But anyways, assuming that we all get it downloaded for free with this method here, I'm gonna open up that program that's already installed on my computer. Inside of the upscale program, it's pretty straightforward to use. We can select our image, and then we have a few different models to choose from, which puts this one ahead of the other two examples that we have shown so far. You can go and try all of these models for yourself, but for this example, I will just use the high fidelity model. We can then go and change the scaling of this photo, but past a certain point, you'll get this little error message saying that you might have some rendering issues depending on your device. So generally try to avoid that little warning sign, but it really depends on your computer. I'll set it to four times so it's even across all of our different examples. You can set your output folder as you would like and then click on upscale. The other advantage of this particular software is that we can do this to multiple images all at once and choose our models on top of that. So this is a really useful tool in that sense. So we'll click on upscale and then see what the result gives us. Looking at that before and after, it gives us a nice sharp result. The shirt is a little bit less clear than some of the other examples we've seen, but her face looks really nice after that upscale. Now it's important to remember that although I'm looking at the before and after here inside of the upscale app, when I clicked upscale, this final output was exported to the output folder that we had set before. So now with all of those image upscalers used, let's go and compare them one by one to the original image here in Photoshop. All of these images are unedited. They're the same downloads that we got from the different programs, but they're just as layers so I can turn them on and off and compare everything pretty easily here. So this was our original image. The long edge of the photo was less than 600 pixels. So it's quite low res. You can see how blocky and pixelated everything looks. So the first image upscaler that we used was the I Love IMG, which is this result here. So turning that on and off, you can see that made a really nice difference. This was the most bare bone option that we had. It didn't have any models to choose from. You could only do the two or four X resize, but considering how simple it is, if you just wanted something to the point without any extra fluff, this would be a nice option. Even on her shirt, the result looks pretty nice. It rebuilds some of those details surprisingly well. Next, comparing this to the upscale.media option, this isn't even close to stacking 
up with the I Love IMG. It is a little bit better, but it still isn't very good. So although this is an option that I've heard a lot of people recommend for AI image upscaling, at least with this photo of a portrait, I would not say that this is super worthwhile, but it does do some enhancements and it allows you to have a larger resize amount if that's something important to you. But in terms of quality, it's maybe not the best of these options. Next, we have the Upscale program, which is the app that we had to download onto our computer. And this one has a bunch of different models that we can choose from. And you can also change the size by quite a large amount. So in terms of just general settings, this by far had the most features compared to the other two platforms. The face is rebuilt decently well. I'm sure you could go and play around with the other models to see what works better in the photo. Maybe things are a little bit overly smoothed. Her hair doesn't look terribly realistic, but it's passable considering it is all free. Then going down to her shirt, I would say that the I Love IMG did a better job at rebuilding the shirt. I'll just turn on the I Love IMG image. So this was the I Love IMG, and this is the upscale program. So the I Love IMG, I think, did a better job with these fine details details and even some of the hair. So that is something to consider depending on what details are in your photo. But now to compare all of the software to a $200 image upscaler and sharpening tool that I use in photography, which is called Topaz Labs Photo AI, turning this on and off. This was our after and this is our original image. So this does a really good job at rebuilding everything. I'm not saying that you need this necessarily, but this is like the high end of what you should hopefully be expecting from these AI image upscaler tools. But if we compare this to the I Love Image, I'll turn this on and off, that actually looks pretty comparable. So this is I Love Image and this is Topaz Labs, the $200 software. Those are pretty good comparisons there. Then we have the upscale media. So this is Topaz Labs and then upscale media. Not really a competition in that case, so I would say upscale media maybe doesn't hold up quite as well. And then we have the upscale, but spelt a little bit funny. This is, again, the program that we download onto our computers. This is our Topaz Labs and then the upscale. So it is a little bit softer. Some of the details aren't quite there, but it's still not too terrible overall. Especially if you don't have $200 to spend on an upscaling tool, I would say that I Love IMG probably did the best job in terms of overall quality. But if you care about having all of the individual settings, such as the models and more resizing options, then the upscale software, again, that you download onto your computer is probably going to be the best option for you. But just remember that depending on your computer specs with the upscale downloaded software, you might get some slow loading compared to the web-based apps. So ultimately, considering these three different examples that we have, I honestly think that the iloveimg.com option did the best in terms of overall quality, but it doesn't necessarily have all these settings that some of you might be looking for. If you are more interested in having those additional settings, then the upscale software, again, upscale, but spelt with a Y, is probably going to be the more favorable option for you. But go ahead and try all of these different software Maybe there's one that I miss that you prefer using, and if so, let me know what it's called down in the comments below. Anyways, I hope you found this useful and you can start to upscale your images a little bit easier, and with that, I'll see you in the next one.